Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. You know what? I feel really bad there for pushing, Eric. I'm so sorry, Eric. You were doing such a great job, but I'm like, the time, the time. <laughs> I feel so bad. No, I don't have a webcam as of yet. How you guys doing? I hope everyone's had a great time. Happy 20th birthday to Slytherin. Thank you very much there to Eric. I didn't even realize uh, Matrix slash Slytherin had, uh, had still pampers. I'm going to have to take a look at that. So here we are. We are going to be taking a look at one of the East. Now, I do have to say that there is a small problem with one of the codecs, which is not the fault of one of the East. It's actually a fault of Microsoft, supposedly. So I have actually carried out a change. However, the game may still crash as it's meant to be with the sound as well. But I'm trying to get things working so we can use sound too. But with that said, we'll go ahead and get into this. We are going to be playing here uh, with pretty much standard options. I've been told that supposedly with the actual difficulty, it doesn't make the AI smart, it just makes it more of a grind fest. So what we're going to be doing then is giving the Soviet Union the 150 admin level over here, so they can actually make more appropriate choices when it comes to actually deploying units, building units, and etc. Uh, so we're going to go with that. Uh, do let me know if the audio is too loud, I can try and sort things out. So there is a small chance that it may crash. Uh, just bear that one in mind. Just, just, <laughs> I'm hoping it doesn't happen, but just bear that one in mind there. Uh, I'm going to be using a couple map mods over here, in fact. No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, you Earthlings are not ready for that as of this moment in time. Uh, so the map mod I'm using here, I can't recall what the name was. I'd have to try and figure out where the source was. I can do that, but I don't have it ready now, unfortunately. Uh, but I'm using a zoomed-in map mod here, but then I do also have one which is zoomed out, so you can see changes here. The reason for that is so we can actually have the complexity up close and have a nitty-gritty looking nice, and then we have the uh, the simplicity when we do zoom out. Uh, so it has been a little while since I've played one of these, but one of these is like riding on a bike or slipping on an old uh, an old pair of shoes, essentially, really. Okay. <laughs> I've seen his hands indeed. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Blame Kushan. It's always Kushan's fault. He knows it. Okay, so we are going to be starting here. Now, there's a couple changes that we do have to consider here. So, if we go into the commander's report, then. How you doing there, Pixel? Glad to hell. 23 months. My god. <laughs> it is always your fault there, Kushan. I'm glad you started to get the picture. <laughs> right, so what I want to do here, then, is really get an overview of where our assets are, where the equipment is, what do we have, and what we're going to use of it. Uh, this is not stock, uh, this is map mods. You should know me there, THG, I do like these uh, map mods. Uh, yes, this one's really quite nice. I like it because it actually has a lot of detail. You do have the towns over here that aren't actually on the vanilla map, as far as I'm aware. Um, I also like it as the fact that it is in German as well, so you get a little bit of a nice, authentic feel. But then when we uh, zoom out, it is a different map mod here. Just to make things a little bit easier to see terrain, uh, this is good, but sometimes it's a little dark to see where, uh, well, what is planes and etc. Yeah, see you there shortly there, Pixel. Right then, so let's take a look then. So we do have a commander's report. What I'm going to do here then is take a look at the actual army groups. Uh, what we're going to be looking for here really is the number of AFVs, the, uh, uh, the aircraft, and really trying to see where these things are distributed. Uh, we do begin the game here with only 30 administration points, which is not exactly a lot there to work with. Uh, I will be streaming until 8pm BST, which is going to be fun. I'm going to be streaming this as a stream, and then I will be uploading the actual parts to my own channel. So if you miss it here, you'll be able to catch it up there, and as well here too, which is pretty handy. Okay, so we do have Army Group North, Centre and South, and we do have the Romanian Army Group over here, which is decent enough. You can see that there's only 65,000 men here, and I think we actually do have some German forces attached to this Army Group as well. Uh, you can see that we do have the greatest collection of armor here in the center. Uh, South has a pretty decent collection. Aircraft is pretty good in the center, but we're going to have to figure out where we're going to have these assets. I am also using, uh, I, I have a music playing in the background, but I also do have some ambient battle fuel sounds playing as well in the background. Uh, so do let me know if they're too quiet or if they're too loud. I just feel like it adds something to the actual music as well. Gives another layer there. Uh, so what we're going to do here then is take a look at the actual armies. So you can see we have them attached to the actual army groups over here. Okay. So you can see that we have army group center. So 9th, 2nd, 2nd Panzer, 3rd Panzer, 4th, 16th. Now, center is quite blessed there to actually have two of the Panzer groups over here. We do have 4th attached to the north. We have the 1st Panzer attached to the south over here, which is good to work with. Uh, what we're really quite interested in is where do we move these Panzer groups? Where do we actually aim for really. 
how do upgrades work in this game? Well, let's take a look then. So let's see, we have the 20th Panzer Division over here. What I can go ahead and do is view their current table equipment, their uh, organization here. If I take a look, let's see. Yes, if you click on table equipment, it shows you what the actual table equipment is on paper, what it should be, what it actually is. And then you can go ahead and click this button down here, which is show next table of equipment upgrade. So it shows you then we'll have the 41B Panzer Division, and then that would be upgraded to the 41C Panzer Division. You can also, it's actually quite nice as it tells you how many turns until it's actually upgraded. You get a total number of men down here, which is very nice to work with. You can see what exactly changes, which is very nice. Uh, so you can see the Panzer Divisions, uh, they very much, uh, they very much do change as the game progresses. You'll soon see this total number of men actually decrease. So you can see this one goes to the 44 Division. Uh, I don't know if there's actually a 45 Division here, equipment. Uh, but it seems like we do have a 44 Panzer Division, so you can see that the actual number of men does decrease. The Panzer Divisions on paper actually had more firepower than they ever had previously, but the issue is there's just the personnel was not there. Often the actual uh, equipment wasn't there as well, especially when it came to the uh, tanks and etc. Oh god, yes it is. <laughs> it often is. Okay, so we have that going for us, so that's good to see then. Now, there's a few little things that I've seen people do here. I'm not entirely sure if we're actually going to go ahead and do the same. But if I go back to the commander's report, and if we go ahead and uh, let's see, cause. Uh, do let me know if the music's too loud. Hopefully it's okay. Go to German. Okay, that's support level. Uh, which do I want to be in? Right, not that one. Bugger. Okay, let me just quickly restart that. <laughs> I always forget what the actual default is, so I'm going to go back and make sure we get that right. Load that right back in there. A small chance of a crash, but we'll be okay. In fact, I can do a little test here. Uh, I'm running a little test quickly, just to make sure it all works. Ideally, it does. Yeah, see you later, VTHG. Have a good one, my friend. Oof, yeah. 90 sounds pretty good there. Hey, you doing Honoris? Good to have you, my friend. Yeah, no, it's going to be really good. I do like one of these. I'm very much looking forward to War of the East, too. So anyhow, let's go back to Commander's Report. Right, so this... Ah, this is the screen I do want here, then. What I'm going to do, then, is select None. If we go to Infantry. Uh, so on this screen here, we do actually have the ability to edit the table equipment. As you can see here, we can see the amount of table equipment, which is, like, how much they actually have uh, in terms of actuality. It's funny, because you do have some divisions that do have excess equipment. Like we have the 78th Infantry Division here, which is over-equipped at 103%. Uh, you can see here that we have the maximum table equipment settings over here. Uh, turns units, uh, order of battle, okay. So, we do have a few options. I've seen a few people, and what they like to do is actually reduce the uh, table equipment percentage there. Uh, so some people actually reduce it down to about 80% I've seen. The reason being... Uh, let's see, where can I find our pool? Indeed. Uh, I like the little patch there. I'm quite happy I got the patch on there. So let's see, production filters, show pools, hide, all right, show types. Let's see, active pools, transit pools, all pools. Okay, we'll show active pools then. Right, okay. Okay, here we go. So what I want to go ahead and do then is capacity units right pool let's see transit pool all pools <sighs> capacity might be because we're in turn one now and i don't actually have anything in the pool oh i do have some units in the pool here okay right so we do let's see so that's all pools active right okay so we do have certain units actually in the pool right now i imagine yes you can see that we do have production capacity over here as we will have uh, panzer II slowly roll in here panzer 38 ts as well uh, you can see that we do have a few Panzer IV Fs over here. Uh, what might be... Uh, does reducing it really help, at least in 1941 before war start, before we start suffering shortages? Because yes, it gives more reserves into the pool, but it feels as if making the divisions weaker. See, that is the counterpoint there. So, I think what we need to do is really make some decisions. So, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do a blanket 
like a blanket reduction of table equipment. But I think what we'll do then is take a look at how the situation develops. We're not going to change it yet. Uh, but essentially what I want to do here then is let me go ahead and get my drawing tools up so I'll be good to go here. I don't often get to use these drawing tools anymore, but I do like to use them when I get the chance to. Always best to use them in a game where it is windowed. Okay, let's get the arrows on here. Okay, so let's say, well this is what I'm going to be doing here essentially. So let's say that we have our group north moving up over here. So, at this stage, okay, 100% table equipment is fine. We do have the pools here. This is when we are at our strongest, essentially. Uh, but what I want to do then is, let's say that we get to this point over here. So let's say that we uh, make it past Riga. Uh, there's very little, very little in terms of resistance. It might be around about that point that we actually reduce the table equipment of the Panzer Divisions. Uh, maybe reduce the amount of strength in the Panzer Divisions in the north and then have those... Uh, those panzers taken and given to let's say let's say that army groups have has a bad time or army group uh, center has a bad time what i'd like to do then is potentially have it so let's say 100 here let's say about 80 here but let's have that based on success so essentially what we could do then is take the 80 so reduce that uh, sorry take that 80 uh, take the 20 panzer percentage, well, percentage of panzers, whatever you want to call it, and have that moved over here. So that 100, in theory, is also going to be less than that, because that's not going to be the actual, that's going to be the desired. So what we could potentially do then is move 20% of the table equipment potentially down here, using the pool system, and then actually boost that up closer to the actual, if we're struggling down here and then the same sort of system if we go down to the south and i think that might be like a way that we can sort of have uh, sort of like a firefighter system essentially if there's fires along the front then we'll have those units move down there uh the thing is with the actual panzer divisions they weren't all equal and at times well you would very often have actual forces moved around to where they were needed yeah exactly i'm glad you agree there perch but that's what i wanted to allude to so i think that's what we're going to do then uh, because we don't know how our success is going to look. I have changed the options to play on normal difficulty here. Because in fairness, it doesn't improve the AI. Um, it just makes it a little bit more grindy. There's no combat bonus. There's no attack bonus or defense bonus. The defense bonus is hardcore. Do not ever use the defense bonus. My god, I, I wish I'd realized about that. Okay. So with that said, we've got sort of like the basics established here, which is good news. Okay, so weather is clear, which is always a good thing. If I take a look over here, so we don't have anything in the logistics phase of this moment. If we take a look at what we have in terms of reinforcements. So we do have a decent amount of reinforcements. Uh, but then we'll quickly have those uh, dissipate, really. So we do have a number of actual divisions coming in here, which is good news. If we take a look at air units over here, then. So we do have additional squadrons coming in, which is good to work with. Uh, what we need to figure out as well is really where to deploy the air power. Yeah, so your defensive bonus. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Oh, I regret that one. I regret that one big time. I think what we need to do here, then, is figure out which objectives we want to push towards first and foremost, really. Uh, let me go ahead and hide units. There we go. Now, Riga is good, as it is a port. The reason why that's good to have is due to the fact that... Yeah, Baku, essentially, yeah. So <laughs> is that we are able to bring supplies in through the port there. Which is nice. Essentially, if you have a port, it acts almost like a railhead. I don't know if you need a port of a certain size. It's been a while since I've looked into it. But I do believe, I think I recall, if you do have a port, it acts almost like a railhead. Uh, so it will not push supplies out like a actual rail connection. As uh, if we had a connection to Germany, to the actual German rails over here, then you would have that uh, push supplies along the entire length. Uh, it would only act like a railhead here at Riga. Which is still good. It is better than nothing. And it's decent as you can use that to actually get a supply build up before you actually get the um, get the rails out here. Ah, Blue Barrow, sir. <laughs> I like that. Uh, so we do have logistical centers that we're going to be aiming towards then. Riga is fantastic. I mean, the northern and the Baltic is fantastic due to, let's see, can I see the line of this map mode? Um, I can't see it on this map mod, actually. Ah, no. No, no, I can't see it. Um, but there is a line. Indeed, happy birthday. <laughs> they definitely did it. I can't recall exactly where the line is, but it's something like... I think it's something like this, this sort of area here. It might be further to the north, in fact, so maybe a little bit more... Uh, maybe more like that, perhaps. 
But there's a there's an area over here in the Baltic where it is much cheaper to actually convert the rail lines over uh, to the actual gauge of rail that we use. So that's something to bear in mind as well. The north tends to be easier due to the fact that there is a decent amount of clear uh, terrain. Uh, we do benefit from having the ports over here like Riga, uh, is it Tallinn over here in the north as well. There's a number of ports that you can actually benefit from, so that is quite nice. Being able to convert the rail lines is also very nice as well. So it's actually, it's a better logistical situation in the north as opposed to... Uh, the south is not as bad either. The center is probably the area with the worst logistics. And if we take a look... Whoops, I'm still on the draw tool here. I'm going to be streaming until about 8 o'clock. Which is going to be fun. Yes, so we do have ports over here as well. Further to the north, it covers the pre-war Free Baltic States. And it's the... Right, okay. Right, that's good to know. Uh, this map mod doesn't actually have the line on here. I don't think... No, I can't see it on the actual map mod here. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but yes, down here in the south, we do benefit from large ports. So that's uh, a uh, vast port. There are a number of ports around here as well. So it does help out with the actual logistics of the area too. Uh, but there's also a number of large cities in the area they can capture. Uh, what helps it especially is the fact that this is majority clear terrain as well. That is really quite nice. In the center, we do have a lot of forest, uh, which is not exactly great. There's also the swamps, which is a difficult one to deal with. There are major cities, but not as many of them. It's going to be a difficult area to move with. There's also the rivers over here. Uh, yes, there's rivers over here in the Ukraine. We do have the main one over here, um, but they flow differently. I mean, we do have actual breaks between the rivers over here where the land is clear, so logistics can move along there. Having the rail lines, yeah, that's going to be a good thing. I really do like this map mod. I'm going to have to try and find the link to it later on. Uh, but I think one of the first things, if not, yeah, I think the first thing we're going to do here then is actually decide where to deploy the uh, rail conversion group. So let's see. How do we get them up? Let's see. Uh, there we go, rail repair units. So on control 9. There we go. So that highlights them. Whoops, that's for reconnaissance. Uh, we do have here then highlight fortified regions, artillery units, tank units, security units, not mechanized units, uh, armor, mech, etc. So that's quite handy. It's useful to have there, really. Uh, but we have highlighted the actual rail engineers. So we do only have four of these actual units over here, the FBDs. These guys are pretty great. Uh, but what we're going to do here then is actually have them redeployed. There is an argument that can be made uh, to potentially radically redeploy them. I've seen I've seen a few people really quite radically redeploy them. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and take a look. So there's... Right, so we have one here, another one there. We have two in the north. It's a consideration to potentially take one of these from the north and give it potentially to the center or even to the south. Uh, south, we do have a way to make things a little bit easier. We might go ahead and take the one over here to the north and potentially have it reassigned. Uh, but in all fairness, we could probably uh, probably leave it as is. We could make use of this rail line over here to Kaunas and then to Vilnius uh, towards the northern end over here to the north of Minsk. Have it go that way. Uh, but if we take a look, there is other paths that could be taken. This one is not too bad, but again, yeah, it goes down here. Probably better off by taking this uh, this path over here straight. The issue is it relies upon having to take Kaunas, and Kaunas isn't always as easy to take. And the reason being that we do have... It's a city... Uh, let's see. What sort of terrain is it on? Okay, yeah, so it's a city there. Um... We see Swamp over here, but it is protected by the rivers. Which does make it a little bit more uh, uh, awful to take. And uh, we do have a Swamp over here. Kaunas, Vilnius, Minsk is generally a good rail line. Yes, it is. It is. We shouldn't have a problem taking Kaunas. We shouldn't have a problem. But I'm getting flashbacks of the plus one defensive uh, bonus to the Soviets. And I'm thinking, actually, no, that, that was actually a bit of a problem. <laughs> but anyhow... We'll start getting into this then. I do like to have a good preamble before we get started, just to sort of establish what we're doing here. Uh, general ideas and generally like little mechanics. Um, so we can leave the rail lines deployed, the rail groups deployed, uh, most as they are. Uh, taking Brest and Tosk is going to be quite important here to begin with. Uh, that one I want to have ideally fall on the first turn. 
Uh, we can see that the forces over here. So we have the 22nd Tank Division, the 42nd Rifle Division, and the 6th Rifle Division. Uh, so we have Detection 9 on the 42nd, Detection 8 on the 22nd, and Detection 6 on the 6th uh, Rifle Division there. We can work with that. We do have a source over here to the south. We have clear terrain, uh, clear around here. The issue is the river. What we could potentially do then is give units, give divisions, pioneers, and that would actually aid them in crossing the river there. The best bet would probably be like... Mm, uh, probably attaching the pioneers to the actual armoured units, but pioneers do come in handy. Okay. So... What I'm thinking about doing here is actually having the rail... So we do have one down here, which is actually quite good. We do have a Romanian uh, railroad group over there. What I'm thinking about doing is potentially bring in the one over here myself in southern Poland and actually having it deployed out this way. What we could potentially do then... Uh, there should also be some super heavy artillery. Yes, there. Uh, that is, yes, indeed. Uh, I can shoot those divisions, indeed. Uh, so what we might look at doing then is actually having the rail group brought down here. The reason being we can have uh, this railroad repaired, which is not bad at all. You can see it goes over here uh, towards Venezia. Venezia? How you pronounce that? And towards this area. It works well because the axe... It, it does help out. You could potentially have it move north. Uh, usually I would have it head towards this uh, city over here. But you could obviously have it head further north. But it's quite nice as you do have the German forces advancing into Ukraine. We are served well by the, po uh, by the Polish rail lines over here. We do have centers that are not too far away. There's lots of clear terrain. It's not so bad. They can survive. But you want to have them really move towards the rail lines, which is handy. And then in the meantime, we could have this rail group over here that can start to repair towards Odessa. And so essentially what you end up doing is having... Uh, uh, like a rail line going like that way, and a rail line going like that way, which helps out. Oil is important, fuel is important, um, but we do have a stockpile, so you don't... You're not going to notice it immediately, but obviously it's one of those things of where you want to secure as much as you can, as quickly as you can. If I take a look then... Uh, production... So, fuel stores... Uh, if I click on Germany... So, those are the stores that we have right now. Yeah, active. Uh, vehicles are going to be quite important. Okay. As you can see that we have this amount of fuel, we have this amount of oil. Trying to find as much as you can is going to be a good idea. Okay. So what I'm going to do then is take the rail group. I might do it afterwards, actually, once we've secured some of this territory, because I could potentially have a move further. Uh, so we might do that, actually, towards the end there. Uh, but what we're going to do then is actually start over here, I think, around brest Um As said, we do have some super heavy artillery actually around the area. So what I can do is actually go into Commander's Report here. Let's see, equipment perhaps. Uh, is this going to show me only armoured vehicles, armoured cars? I might be looking in the wrong place. Oh uh, no, actually no, I think I'm looking in the right place. Uh, artillery, there we go. So we have the super heavy guns over here. Uh, let me sort by type. Heavy artillery. Um, there we go. German. Right artillery? Yes, we do have the super heavy guns over here. So we do have the 355s, we have the fuel doors. But this is what we're looking for over here. The 600mm Carl Siege Mortars. So if I click on you, you can see where we have them. Oh, so we can actually take a look at where these uh, are the super heavy. I might be in the wrong, um, wrong place for this, actually. Let's see. Well, we can actually see the stats over here. So I'm in the wrong place for really what I want to be looking at. But we can actually see the actual effect of the gun there. Uh, range, accuracy, blast there. Anti-armor, anti-soft. Obviously, it's going to do a lot of damage there. <laughs> I think I'm in the wrong one here. Let's see. Units. Let's see. I'm trying to remember which one we want to be in now. <laughs> Somebody will know what I'm up to. I can't remember which one it actually is in now. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Let me sort this out on map. Okay. Unit size. Italian, perhaps. 
Might be an equipment tab. I'll take a look at that one in a sec. I think that's where it was, actually, but we'll take a look. Uh, German. Let's see. Guns. I can't remember how I found it last time. You can find it. I can't remember which one it's actually in. It will be on here, to be honest. Um... Do I have a better plan? <laughs> Do any of my plans actually ever work? No. Uh, we'll we'll go along with it, really. Try to push as much as we can. Right. Uh, let's see. So, clear all filters here. There's a way to actually click on it. I can't recall how it was done now. It's not bad. Must be in Commander's Report. It's not too bad. I'll figure it out. It's been a little while since I last played, so I forgot how you do the nifty stuff like that. Uh, we'll find it. Might be attached to the actual army. So we have 817th, which is a 210mm guns there. Um, heavy weather. 210s. There is a way. There is a way. As a means, there's a way. I'm going to have to remember how we do it now. Upgrade. Yeah, so you're looking for which units have them equipped. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for there, Tech. I can't recall which way you get to it now. Is it in units? It must be in units. Current. No. Oh, I can't remember how you find it now. I'm a group south. Had most trouble in the campaign. Maybe pushing northern panzers towards the Lincoln and then reinforce the south might work. In your production clap. Ah, the production tab. Then click on units. That's how you do it. Okay. Oh yeah, this is what I was looking for. I'll oh, thank you very much for that tech. I knew there was a way to do it, and I couldn't remember how you did it. But yeah, if we take a look, so Carl 600mm, click that. Yep, there we go. I knew there was a way to do it. Okay. So you can see that we have them over here in the 4th Army, we have them in the 4th uh, Corps over here. Okay. So I want the uh, 833rd Siege Mortars actually redeployed elsewhere. Uh, what we need to do then is take a look at the units that we do have here. Uh, we are going to be launching attacks against the enemy's airfields and shortly. In fairness, what we could actually do then is we go to our settings for the air power. Right, here we go. Air is probably one of the things that I'm weakest on in uh, War in the East. We could even turn off ground support to be honest, and it might be worthwhile to actually turn off ground support to begin with. Uh, possibly, though maybe not so much as we do have a lot of attacks we need to actually work initially. Uh, our airfields are pretty close to the front lines, they're never really going to be much... They're, no, they're, they're probably not going to be in a better position than they are in right now. But it might be worthwhile to turn off the ground support, we could also turn off the amount of escort, we can, t we can tone things down really. We could have the percent required to fly lowered as well. And percent uh, required to fly is uh, the amount of the squadron that's ready to fly, if I recall correctly. So we can actually lower that. So we have just everything fly, if I recall. Um, I think we'll turn off ground support. Ground support is good. We can always turn that on next turn. But what we want to do here then is hit the... Uh, yeah. Uh, hit the Soviet airfields as hard as we possibly can. And then what we'll have to do then, I had it suggested to me by uh, Tele, uh, Telemachus, I think his name is, uh, to carry on actually hitting the uh, production. So we'll have that. I think we can lower that down there. Just have 10% required. I mean, we could have that lowered down to zero. Just just if it can fly, it goes. So ground support, airfield attack. Yeah, so you can see here, airfield attack escort. What I'm going to do is actually lower that. Airfield attack. We could leave it on 80 or could lower it. 1 to 1. Maybe. We could even go potentially lower than that. I think we might go lower. 50 there, perhaps. The reason being that we do have fighters more available for other missions, perhaps. Um, airfield attack escort. We might... Well, though, though, then again, we might have more aircraft shot down. And we can only bomb so many airfields. So I think what we'll do then is we'll have the amount of escort actually about 100. So we'll have it reduced by a third, but keep it there about 100. I think it should be okay. Um, that should be alright. Reconnaissance, escorts. Mm. Mm. I don't know. 
I think we can get away with that being on. We have reduced the escort for the airfield attack, so we should be all right. Uh, so what I'm going to do here uh, then is run the well, run the attacks. What I'm going to do though, first and foremost, is I'm going to take a risk here. As I said, there is a potential for the game to crash. So uh, that is because I'm actually running it with the sound files not renamed. Uh, you can rename the sound and video files to actually fix the bug. It's a bug with like a codec. Um, okay, that's good. That's working. So if we'd like to save it here and there, then at least we can try and recover things if it goes wrong. Uh, so what we're going to do then is we're going to have the AI fly these missions. Okay. Oops, no, not that. <sighs> Let's go like that. Run it once again, just increase the amount of detection. Uh, I'm going to lower the amount of match this level there, make it a bit quicker. Okay. As you can see, that has revealed additional units in the area. Now, if I take a look over here, then at these units. Uh, so, detection looks to be about the same there. We did have a number of divisions that's revealed over here in Ukraine, but you can see detection isn't exactly great. Uh, the more detection, obviously, the more about the unit you actually do learn. Detection 9, so we do have a lot of information on that division there. Okay. So, I think what we need to do then is begin at Brestotorsk. We'll do that after the bombing of the actual airfields. So, uh, what we could potentially do here then is assign airfields. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure these airfields are actually within range of commands. So that is, yes, okay. I believe it is uh, Control Z. Is it Shift Z? There we go. If you press Shift and Z, it uh, when you click on the actual headquarters, it does show you which are attached. And if you actually click on the unit, it gives you an orange arrow to its uh, command and headquarters. So that's quite good. So you can see there, orange goes there. It's quite useful. It is very nice. It's it's very good to actually keep uh, calls together, really, which is very good. So let's see. Yeah, you can see they're not exactly... Let's try. I don't think I'm going to be able to get them all within range, to be honest. Oops. Yes, so uh, hitting them. Um, right, okay, so let's take a look at these. Bombers, uh, fighters, we have bombers here as well. Bombers there, fighters there. Okay, we'll go back, so there's not much I can potentially do. I don't want to move the airfields as of yet. Yeah, they're really well worth it. They're well worth it. I'm not a good player. I've just got the... <laughs> I'm, just a, I'm just a tryer. <laughs> Okay, these airfields are spread out. Okay, that'll be fine. And so what we'll do then is we'll begin the actual bombing. This is why I have the multiple map mods as well, because it makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on in this sort of map mod here. The game is quite good for modding. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and launch the attacks. So we're going to do, obviously, during the daytime. We have Doctrine over here, which we've entered. Okay, so we're going to start. Uh, put the message level up there, perhaps. So you can see the... Quite high losses on the airfields. Obviously, this is very much a surprise attack. There we go. So we're going to attack here. We're going to keep bombing the airfields until we can no longer do it. We want to cause as much damage as possible, really. Okay. There we go, so we have a good chunk of the preamble done. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far.